Final effort, Christ's favourite disciple crawls his way to the top of the cross, placing his ear as close as he can towards his master's mouth. Jesus smiles and says, Peter, I can see your house from here. Can I get sick of wanking in lockdown? How do you even get sick of wanking? I didn't even know it was possible. My family was very ambivalent about my passions. Like half my family thought I would never be good at magic, and the other half were severed legs. <sighs> In Australia in 2002, whilst talking to a successful Aborigine entrepreneur, he said, Do you still throw spears at each other? I mean, the rocks are in my drink, and it's my tongue actually going over the ice cubes in my cup. The non-institutional, racist thug dictionary of English words with Indian origins. If you didn't get that last joke, it might help you to know that the word thug is actually an Indian word, as opposed to racist thug which is an entirely British invention. Hello! Oh, motherfucker. I forgot to add myself to the screen. Oh, hello. Welcome to Hen Nights 9, 2001. 2001. And I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Do you love it? I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. And do you know what I love? I love... I love the nights. I love the light nights. I love the light nights. I'm the light nights of the table. I love light nights. You don't have to close your curtains before nine o'clock. Last well, a couple of weeks ago, I had to close my curtains at five o'clock. It was still dark. I love the light nights. It's great. I opened the curtains this morning. There was two tits on my fat balls. I love birds. I love watching them. I love them. It's just the weather's nice. We can go out. We can meet people. I, I, I specific I specifically I specifically I, I do when I look at the birds on the table I, I, I just love blue tits but I think that's why I got banned from the mortuary as well but it's great it's lights we can go out we can't go, well we can go out with three people if you've got an R in your name and if it's a Saturday and you can go out with two families as long as one of them is divided by the seven that nobody knows Nobody knows, but I'm arranging to meet up with my. Uh, oh, I've got a fly in here. That's, <laughs> I arranged to meet up with my. Uh, I'm going to say ex. She's not my ex. We're still married. We did split up at Christmas because spending lockdown together when normally you're spending your life outside doing different things, it's not a good thing. But we've arranged to meet up and have a chat and see be, as things are opening up whether or not it'd be nicer to, to get back together again, which would be good. Uh, because the house is not the same without her. And I don't mean that in a lovey-dovey great sort of way. It's just not the same, right? <laughs> because we're on, like, we're on a break. We're on a break, right? Or, or, or as the doctor said when she stuck a finger up my ass, we're, we're on an indefinite hiatus. Um, but, yeah, no, the things around the house are just weird, right? The milk tastes funny after five days. My bread is getting blue bits around the crust. The hoover's not working anymore. It just you turn it on and like dust just sprays everywhere. 
the bath i have no idea where this comes from right but suddenly and with no apparent reason there's a dark line that goes all the way around the bath about two-thirds of the way up my undercrack stink my socks my socks have holes in them and the automatic coffee machine doesn't work and before you start cancel culturing me, check yourself, girlfriend. The car has started to, with that knocking noise again. The grass is out of control. The wheelie bins are not being emptied. And the sky planner is constantly full. What the fuck is a failed recording anyway? But as I say, we'll meet up next week and we'll see if uh, it's worth <laughs> coming back. What else is going on? Oh, God. News, 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 news. I'm loving the news. Are you loving the news? The government have today announced that after a considerable public outcry, they have decided to rename their Renace, Renace? their Race and Ethnic Disparities Report. They remained it the other day. It's now the Prince Philip Duke of Edinburgh Report. I know. It's the funeral tomorrow. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I think it's a good idea that it's happening in, in lockdown because it will keep the crowds away. But my mum said the other day, she said, Bodger did a nice speech outside number 10 about Prince Philip. I said, they wrote that speech 20 years, 30 years ago. It's one thing we knew what was happening. I swear to God, they've been wheeling around on a potato truck for the last 10 years. But he knew, we all knew it, but he's, he, was, he was arranging it. He's been arranging it. His funeral. So the Queen's doing all that for him. Because he's written it all down, what he wants to happen. But there's one thing that he can't do because it's, it's COVID. So, um, what was it? <laughs> yeah, so they can't cremate him at Windsor Castle. Castle? They can't cremate him at Windsor Castle. Because apparently apparently they've had fires there before but they can't do it in during covid so the queen has decided that they're gonna take him over the humber bridge to the maritime museum there uh, that was her idea because uh, she wants to take him after they've been to a few the, the windsor castle they're going up over the humber bridge to the maritime museum uh because she says he should burn in hull i'm going to pause there because i actually i actually thought that was quite sick to be honest monkey embryos there's something else that's a bit weird that's going on human stem cells have have been made by scientists in a laboratory with with monkey embryos and the monkey embryos are destroyed after 20 days but a leading oxford scientist has said that research has opened up a pandora's box on human non-human chimeras you've got to catch them all but but this is nothing new in stem cell and monkey embryo research 56 years 56 years ago a government-funded joint project between Russia and Britain. They inject, injected, they injected a baby monkey with human DNA 60, no, 56 years ago. There is, the results of the experiment are still ongoing, but the government did release a couple of photos, a couple of photos of the subject the other day. Come on! That's our Prime Minister! Go, Bodger! I tell you what, I would. There he is, the wonderful, the wonderful bodger. What else is going on? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We, this is really quite exciting today. Colin versus Cuthbert. Colin versus Cuthbert. Not since Team Megan have we had battle this good. M&S is suing Aldi, the makers of Cuthbert the Caterpillar. There we all were enjoying lockdown. <laughs> not knowing that there were all these caterpillar cakes we had been buying and let's face it making every, even my sister could buy a swiss roll cover it in chocolate and smarties and call it a caterpillar but no we never knew that the original colin the caterpillar was made by marks and spencers 30 years ago and now the british retailer for the first time has decided to sue aldi a german supermarket chain over a caterpillar cake i know what you're thinking it's brexit britain no all supermarkets do caterpillar cakes don't they they've been doing them for years because it's easy to remember we've got aldi's clyde and curly from tesco's we've got cecil from waitrose and wiggles from sainsbury's morris from morrison's charlie's from co-op there's always been colin and now we've got cuthbert that's how i remember it eight caterpillar cakes and 
the thing is, it's we're just being fished in because Audi could stop this at any point. It's a marketing ploy. That's all it is. It's a marketing ploy. Millions of us are going to go out and buy a Colin or Cuthbert cake next week. Even I got sucked in on it. I really did. The bill of cake has made it to the number one spot this week. Yes, that's right. It's the usurper himself, Little Morris from Morrison. This wonderfully comestible chocolate treat is excellent value at £6 and will serve 12 So you only need three for Grandma's funeral. Seriously, I've got nothing better to do with myself all day. Paul, hiya Paul, how are you getting on? Do you want to roll up a HPF on your mic to get rid of the thumping when you say P's and D's? Probably, but I don't like the look of them. You know what I'm saying? I prefer this one than the other one. I'll see what happens, mate. I'll see if I can uh, if I can do that. It's great when you get a sound technician telling you your P's and D's are off. I don't know what to do now. Because normally, I, maybe the mic's too close to me, me big gob. That's probably what it is. So, um, thank you so much for joining us. And <laughs> welcome to the Hen House. We've got a great bunch of comedians for you tonight. Honestly, I know. Uh, we're going straight over to uh, St. Rhythm in London. I'm just saying that just so people know that I'm going over to Streatham. Well done. So <laughs> let's go and meet. Actually, I'm going to say something before we go and meet this next comedian because they so graciously said they'd do the show tonight, but, but, but they're doing another show as well at half eight. I said, well, I'll put you on first then. So I was meant to be quicker, and now I've done that intro as well. That's just delayed it a bit. So let's say hello to Alex. Hello, Alex. You're hello. right. I'm great, thank you. Thanks for having me. No, thank you for agreeing to do this. <laughs> it's great. I, I said you're in. Look at my moustache has gone a bit wonky. So um, <laughs> you're in St. Rhythm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it took me a while to get it, but I got there. I got there. <laughs> That's it. No, I was working in London once, and they said, "Where are you from?" They said Streatham, and they said, "So no, they call it St Rhythm." But ah, oh, I think I'm still too new to the area to know this. I think this is the, this is the thing. I don't. I. I. I it, it shocked me. I didn't know that until I was fifteen. <laughs> so you've you've got some on me. So um, shall I just stop talking? Because I know you've got other things to do. With you. I'd rather. But uh, yeah, it's nice to see you. It's lovely to see you too. Thanks again for having me on. That's all right. So I'm gonna. George, yeah, I feel bad that I'm keeping you. Tell me what, because <laughs> it's your partner's show, isn't it? He's doing something else. You can tell us now and then everyone can yeah, go and look at he's, uh, he's doing an improv show, uh, Shoot from the Hip. And it's every Monday and Friday um, from 8.30 onwards. But don't go on Fridays because you should be hit. Oh, no, <laughs> I see. I don't. I think it's a wonderful world. We can always do catch up. Like two tomatoes running down the road. One turned around to the other and said, come on, tomato, catch up. <laughs> Thanks for laughing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna bring you into full screen and then you can do your thing. All right. Great. So I'm really, really, really pleased. I'm just checking your name to have you in the in the hen house tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in the hen house, we have Alex Bartilas Fernandez. Hello. Uh, hi, I'm Alex. Uh, I'm mixed race. I'm half Indian, half English, or as I like to tell employers. Brown enough to meet your diversity quota, white enough to never call you out on it. Growing up, my mum said, find a job that makes you happy, which sounds nice, but how do you rebel against that? Become unemployed and clinically depressed. I am depressed uh, and anxious and a hoarder. I'm basically a triple threat uh, to myself. Everyone in my house is depressed. I think the only one who isn't is our dog, but I'm working on it. My dog's meant to be an emotional support dog, but she never got the memo. Um, every time I get dumped, she just looks at me blankly like this is way above my pay grade. She taught me how to sit, not how to make men stay. I'm not very good at casual sex though. Like the day after I slept with a guy, I find it really hard uh, not to like obsessively check my phone. But I don't, because if you don't check your phone, then he's both texted and not texted. It's like Schrodinger's cat, he's both alive and dead to me. Of course, I don't tell guys this. I tell guys that I like to go with the flow, uh, which is a nice way of saying that I'm at the mercy of my period. 
I'm also um, a big Harry Potter fan, uh, which uh, might be why men leave. Uh, but I can't help it because uh, I relate to Harry. Like when he was 11, he received a letter from Hogwarts. I got one from the Brent Mental Health team. And then we both spent the next seven years trying to outrun the darkness, only to discover it was inside us all along. Um, I do think depression is pretty common, though. Uh, like the other day, I read that one in four people will experience a mental health problem. And I just find that really shocking because that means that three in four people won't. Who are these people? Everyone in their right mind has a mental health problem. If you're sitting there thinking, I don't have one, it's coming. If you think it's not, you're delusional. And that's a mental health problem. I, um, I once asked an audience, anyone here depressed? And the guy answered, I am now. You know what, fair enough, it has been a little dark, let's try and lighten things up a bit. Uh, <laughs> I see a therapist, not romantically, she's made that uh, very clear. You know those signs in shops which say, if you break it, you pay for it. I think those signs are the reason my dad pays for my therapy. Uh, my dad's not actually watching this show. He's currently on an all-expenses-paid trip to India. In other words, he got deported. Uh, guess who dobbed him in? That joke makes a lot of white people uncomfortable, uh, which is why I tell it. Uh, don't get me wrong, I've got nothing against white people. Like Some of my best friends are friends with white people. My, uh, my boyfriend's a white man. He's um, a newly divorced guy in his 30s. Um, so he comes with his fair share of baggage, his fair share being 50% of the baggage. That's where he uh, got in the divorce. It's quite difficult uh, to be romantic with someone going through a divorce because I'll be like, where have you been all my life? And he'll be like, trying to save my marriage. Uh, my boyfriend drinks a lot more than I do, uh, which I think is fair. You know, I drink a lot if I were dating me too. Uh, he's also got quite like a big personality, but he hasn't got a larger than life personality. And I'm so grateful because the phrase larger than life seems to be used almost exclusively in obituaries. Like, is it just me or is everyone with a larger than life personality dead? I'm starting to think like maybe my uncle Rodney could have lasted a few more decades if he'd just been a little less fun at parties. Um... I uh, You don't need to worry about me, though. Um, I do lots of different things uh, to manage my depression. Um, like, I've recently uh, invested in not one but two personal trainers, um, one for each foot. Um, and I've also got into running, um, and I found running really helpful because now when people ask me about my depression, I can tell them that, yes, I have tried exercise. Uh, you know what else I've tried? Antidepressants. I've been on seven different types of antidepressants, seven. I've had as many antidepressants as Snow White had dwarves. None of them have made me happy, only sleepy, dopey, and grumpy. <laughs> um, I'm, a, I'm a feminist, um, and a lot of men um, don't like that. Like a guy once asked me, what's it like to be a 24 seven raving bitch? Um, I wouldn't know. I. I have to rest. Um, and there's a there's a stereotype that feminists hate men, but of anything, I'd say I'm too easily impressed by men. Because I'm so used to hearing in the news about men who have raped and killed women. That it's got to the stage that if I hear that a man's killed a woman and not raped her first, I'm like, what a gentleman. <laughs> and a male comic came up to me and he said, only a woman could tell that joke. And maybe he's right, maybe a man couldn't get away uh, with telling a joke about rape. But he could get away with rape. <laughs> People say I have a dark sense of humour. Um, I prefer the term humour of colour. I mean, that's Petrus Fernandez, thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, I, did I leave my microphone on? I think you did, but it was. Uh, I liked it because I, 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 I heard some giggles. Yeah, I know. And I thought, oh, and I thought, because, yeah, no, I liked that a lot. I actually, I, I, I comedian of colour, was that what you said? Uh, a humour of colour, yeah. Humour, hey, nice. And yeah. go with the flow, love that. Thank you. And, 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 and the dwarfs, I clapped at the dwarfs. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was lovely. Thank you so, 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 so much. No, thanks so for you having me. 
I'd like to invite you back, but I don't know what's going on in the world. Do you know what I mean? You, you could be going out. You, you could be gigging every every night. Oh in a, no! In a couple no. of months. No, I think I'm, I'm still quite afraid of the world. So um, I think uh, I'll, I'll be still be doing plenty of online gigs. So I'd love to come back if you're happy. Yeah, I'd, you'd be welcome any time. But also, mm -hmm. I'd like to get you if I can get my live gig up and running. Thank you. You'd have to drive up from St. Rhythm to, to Redditch. <laughs> oh, well, that's what the newly divorced boyfriend's for, so. <laughs> yes, that's the thing. <laughs> that's, that's one of Boris's roadmaps, that is, uh, <laughs> Streatham to, to Redditch. I'm going to let you go because I know you've got other things to do, but thank you so, so much. Oh, all thanks, right. Man. Thanks, take care. Uh, that's Bye. all right. Thank you very much. I've no. taken your name, but I'll call you Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Oh, hey, that was good. That was a good way to start the show. An early rape joke. Why not? So uh, what's what's next, people? Well, I tell you what, I did have my... Uh, I get very confused because I've got one... I've got as a touchscreen and then I've got a, a little mouse down here. A little mouse with clogs on. Yeah, I declare. And it goes click, clickety, click over there. We've got a friend um, from the hen house. Uh, yes, indeed, we have a friend from the hen house. And that friend is um he told me off for saying uh eddie van halen it is <laughs> from canada i'm gonna say ontario but i can't remember uh it's 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 i've written it down it's todd van allen add to stream it says add yes. there you go you're adding there we go how hey. are you i'm what hey todd lovely to see you again lovely seeing you and i'm, I'm happy you stopped calling me tom it's nice. It's a, it's a little touches like that that really make this show professional. It's very nice. No, I uh, <laughs> I, I started. Well, I, I'm going to say I started my career very young as an actor. And like in your program, when they spell your name wrong and you got two N, uh, it's just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I apologize. Uh, I, I, the best yeah. one I ever got was Tom Banana. No. Mm hmm. That's, that's not even a. That's not even appealing. Not even close. Not even close. No. Not even close. No. So are you, you are in Ontario, Ontario? Ontario, Canada. Yes. Uh, the nation's capital of Ottawa in a glorious lockdown. It's delightful. Is it, is, when, when I saw you before, how bad was the lockdown? Is it what's gone on? Well, I, I was, I would, I, uh, I'm trying to think of when that was. It would have been, I would have been probably able to perform in comedy clubs. So we were kind of open at that point, but now the numbers hit high again because we've yeah. elected idiots. So now it's. <laughs> Now we're locked down again. So, yeah. I, I reckon I could get any comedian from any place in the world and they'd say, we elected idiots. Oh, yeah. No. That's, okay. New Zealand? No. Absolutely not. No. Right? No. I, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. My, my brother, right, he's working in Australia. He's like a security guard for a, a quarantine hotel. He has to sit mm -hmm. in the corridor and stop them getting out of their, their rooms to, to right. mingle. But yeah, yeah. He, he, he's going back to New Zealand uh, and he booked his flight in February, mm -hmm. and then my niece said to him, have you booked your quarantine hotel? He said, no. She said, well, you've got to book your quarantine hotel before you book your flight. So he couldn't book his quarantine hotel till May. <sighs> uh, so like, uh, right. that's how good New Zealand are. They yeah. say, book your quarantine hotel, then book mm -hmm. your flight. Yeah. It, it makes a lot of sense to me. Right. Uh, when, when, when we try and enforce that, people think uh, we're taking their rights away. It's like, no. No, if you can afford yeah. to go to Florida, jackass, you can spend a couple of grand in a hotel. Wouldn't that be the right. best, though? Just nonstop room service the entire week. Love it. Yeah, I, I can't. Love yeah, it. I, I enjoy it when I stay a night a night in a hotel. I'm sure yeah. I could do ten nights. I, I, yeah. I really could. But it's not taking their rights away. If you, you know, if, it, it's either that or taking your life away. I you had it. a vacation. Shut <laughs> it. Just shut it. It is that is very, very true. Look, I yeah. me and you, I could talk all night, and it's yeah, yeah, not yeah. right because it's about you, not me. Well, having said that, no, Todd, are you no, ready to go? Honestly, Todd, let's keep going. Uh, have you been cut? Let's just keep talking. Let's just okay, no, I'm kidding. Ding, 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 ding. Let's go. Let's do this. Yeah, let's cut. Av. Yeah, oh, that's uh, uh, a, just some swinging dick from Canada. Yeah, cut the show. Let's go. Let's do it. I'm a big Sorry, fan of Canada. I'm a big fan of Rush. Anyway, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't go. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, no. Here I, he is. Yeah. I'm, I'm introducing you. Go Good. On. Do it. No. All right. Go. I'll argue, I'll argue with Rush a bit every day. Ladies and gentlemen, back in the hen house. I'm so. It's not Tom. It's Todd Van Allen. Yay. Uh, it is really hard to believe that a guy with a light bulb on the top of his hat would like Rush very much. Um, 
So, uh, following up from Alex, I would like to open with a rape joke. Is that cool? Totally? Awesome. Okay. No, we're not going to do that. Um, how is everyone's pandemic? I know everyone is at different stages, depending on where you are watching in the world. Uh, I know the U.S. is is getting vaccinated. The U.K. is kind of mostly already there. Uh, we suck in Canada. We're just not getting it. Um, here's uh, the thing. I'm sure everyone at some point in this pandemic has had this happen, um, where you realize that any shower really can be a Silkwood shower. You just need to cry enough. That's all you need to do. Just get that sourdough starter gumption. Just put your back into it, and it goes. Um, as, as I uh, as I said uh, in the intro, I um, we are in lockdown again here in Ontario because we're great, and uh, we are doing the whole thing. We're doing um, uh, the social distancing, uh, even in the house. Uh, my wife and I are staying two meters apart. And um, it is the closest we have ever been. Um, look at look at this. This is just nonsense. Look at that. That is okay. Last haircut. Last haircut. August. That was the last haircut I had. And this is offensive. This is the longest I've ever had it. I feel like a hobo. Um, but uh, I will say this. Uh, ever since uh, about a month ago, uh, I have been getting a lot of body double work for Bruce Dern. That's right. That sound you hear is a lot of young people Googling Bruce Dern. Look up Nebraska. Um, here's, I, okay, so I know I, I know everyone is um, happy to, the, to get vaccinated and everyone is, is looking forward to going back and returning to the world as it was. And I don't, I don't know how I'm going to do with that, to be quite honest. Like, I, I'm going to be very leery going into the new world vaccinated and still kind of wearing a mask or not like I, going out for that first time is going to be like having sex with your wife for the first time after she had an affair like it's me are we good are we sure are you okay oh so i can trust you now that's what we're gonna because hmm? the last time this happened i had to get a shot so cool all right um, I don't know where you guys stand, um, on, on, uh, trending celebrity names. I don't know where you are right now. Uh, I'll tell you this, uh, if it's a celebrity that I adore, right? Like if, if someone that I really, 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 really love, um, when I see their name trending, um, I wish they're dead. I really do. And I'm just, and it's, and it's not malicious. It's not, I just, I, I'm always sitting there going, I'll see Betty White trending. I go, oh God, please, please be dead. Please. You had a good run, sweetheart. Please be dead. Don't have been sitting in a Bob Evans and call your waiter a fairy. Please don't have done that. Don't. Tom Hanks, my God, please be hit. Get COVID again. Get COVID again. I don't need to know what's on your hard drive. I don't. I don't. I don't want that. Jesus Christ. Ted Cruz, for the love of God. But actually, no, Ted Cruz, keep talking. Keep talking, you piece of shit. Please. Okay. All right. I have to find a better last one, right? Ted Cruz is just awful. Um, there's a, I, I hope everyone has been, has been good about um, supporting like their local businesses and stuff like that. Uh, in this in this whole pandemic because they really really need our help because uh, I, I moved to Ottawa from Toronto I lived there for like, 12, like half my life and there was a bar there that I used to do stand up in it was a perfect place it was called the Ossington sadly it closed down and it, it, it you know the the rent and everything and the situation just got the better of them and this is why it was one of my favorite places because uh, they had a, a sign by the bar at the back that you would go in and buy your drinks and it said, welcome to the Ossington, no tabs, no racism, no sexism, no homophobia. And I love that. It puts it in your face. That you're not going to tolerate any monkey business. You get in there, you behave, you be cool. Um, I do love the fact that tabs had top billing. Like that was the big problem they had. Like if there's a female bartender and a guy comes up and says, give me a beer, bitch. Her biggest problem is that he's paying as he goes. Um yeah, they had a bigger problem with the dine and dash than homophobia. Um, I blame the broke woke, of which I'm a member. This is so weird, talking with no response. Like, I, trust me, I've done comedy a while. I'm used to it. But it's just bizarre. Um, is your phone... This I have noticed, and this kind of sucks for me. Um, has, your, has your phone 
Uh, have you noticed that your phone always auto-corrects the thing that you don't want it to? But the second it you, has an opportunity, it will not miss it to uh, auto-correct ducking for you. It's like, oh, look at that ducking asshole. Woo! How tall is that guy? That is the worst joke I've written in quarantine, just so you know. Um, do you all have a um, uh, a friend? I have, I have one of these friends. I have a friend that no matter how a word is spelled... Like if it doesn't, if it isn't pronounced the way it's spelled, they can still name the pronunciation of it like that. Like it is like it's just a jumble of letters, and they nail the proper pronunciation every time. I cannot do that. That is not my fort. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna pause on that one for a bit. Uh, love the affair joke. Thank you so much. Um, I uh, that came like four minutes after it. Okay, all right. Um, I will leave you, I will leave you with this, with a little story. And this is a little bit of inspiration. I think we can all take in these, in these hard times. And I think, I think we need a little bit of inspiration. Um, and it, it's kind of like, a, like a little bit of life, um, uh, life advice, let's say. And I got this when I was in Cuba, I was on vacation in Cuba and uh, we, uh, me and a, and a pack of uh, fellow gringos, uh, we all, uh, took this, um, tour of Havana. And one of the places that we stopped was a cigar factory. And so we go in and we see all these people and they're hand rolling cigars and the smell is great and everything's awesome. And we're really kind of taking it in. And one of our, uh, uh, of our number, um, uh, raises his hand and says, how do you know when to stop smoking a cigar? And everyone just went, yes! Like, oh my God, we're finally going to get the answer to this. Because like, this is like white person problem number 15. Like, when do you stop having a cigar? Like, when do you know it's done? It's a whole thing. And so the guy says, oh, I can answer that. And so we're like, yes, finally. So we all kind of lean in and the, and the tour guide kind of clears his throat. And uh, he goes, you stop smoking a cigar. And we go, yes. He goes, when it starts to taste bad, it always tastes bad. Like, how do you not know when to, to and, he, and he's like, no, 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 no. Think about this. If it, if it starts to taste bad, why would you keep doing something you don't like doing? Right? If you have a cigar like this and you only like that much, stop smoking. Why would you do something you don't like to do? Life is short. And then he said, that's the way you should live your life. Life is short. Don't do something you don't like. And I get it. I totally get it, but my problem is uh, I am a completionist with a huge case of FOMO, so uh, I will be sitting there through a Lancero that's like this long going, uh, what if this is like season two of Better Call Saul? I really got to get through this. I really got to go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I got to go too. Thank you. That is my time. Thank you from Canada. See you all later. Todd, man. <laughs> hey. Hey. I, I don't know if I can agree with you about Better Call Soul. I'm not sure. I know it is. it does seem hard work, but you just expect it to get better. It's season two. It's season two. That's the slog. You got to take a, take a little bit. You got to get through the skateboarder bit, and then it's uh, smooth sailing. I mean, the thing it's is, it, he's a joy to watch. He is a joy to yes. watch. Uh, yes. Uh, no doubt. But it, 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 is, it is sluggish. I'm very much looking, to, uh, looking forward to that movie where he t uh, steals the role from Liam Neeson. <laughs> and uh, just starts beating the shit out of people. That's going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> that would be good. Oh, no, that was, hey, I'll tell you what. Don't worry about no no, no audience. Uh, I, I've, I've done a lot of these shows now. Oh, no, no, uh, no. I get it. Yeah. No, no, but like I, I was just sitting there because I sit, I sit down sometimes when the other acts are on, and yeah. I just felt, I felt so comfortable. So I know that was good. Mm. <laughs> That's the yeah. last thing I wanted to do is have you sitting there going, "Oh, when yeah, are you going to no. do the rape joke?" <laughs> no, that's it. I was just so relaxed, and it was just, it nice. just, it, there was just a nice rhythm to it. So it was lovely. Oh, uh, thank you, sir. I, I know how difficult it is without without feedback. It is weird, um, and then when you when you finally get in front of people again, it's going to be like, oh, what was that? That's you, okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. I don't actually know if I was listening to you before when I asked you about the lockdown. I, I you're not allowed to go out to do gigs, is that? Yeah, no, we don't, there's no, no place to do gigs because they're all locked no. down. So, yeah, that's the. Uh... So hey, this can is you it. stay around? Can you stay around yeah. for the caption yeah. competition? Abs yeah, absolutely, good. of course, of course, no question. I know on my, my running order I said nine o'clock, but it looks like it's going to be quarter past, but that's fine. Okay. <laughs> so we'll see you in a bit. Ladies and gentlemen, right. it's Todd Van Halen. Hey, and I didn't say Eddie uh, at all, Van Halen. There you go. Good stuff. I, I agree about smoking cigars as well. 
Man, what's the what is the point? What is the point? Thank you so much. I, I don't know if I've done everything that my sound engineer has, has asked me to do. I've moved my, my microphone closer to my mouth and I've put one of these pop, 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 pop shields on. Um, it looks like I've, I've got half of Mickey Mouse giving me a good old nosh off. I just said that out loud. I apologise. Right, let's go and see someone else. Uh, he's a man... He's a man of the news. He's a man in the news. He is a man of the news. He is Av Singh. Av. I yeah, tried to... I'm just... Sorry. Go. No, I was just going to say, I, I was trying to... I didn't know if you were ready, see, and I thought I'll give you a little bit of an intro. I am... Um, I, I made most of it up. I am always ready, but um, I'm not happy though, Steve. You're never happy. I know, no offence, right? But your week always seems to be, like, because Friday is when we see you, a long week. You always seem to have a long week. Some people have short weeks, but but yours always seems to, to drain well, you, mate. Yeah, what, what's topped it off is today I was threatened uh, with violence by two old white men. Hey, 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 hey. All white men are old. Uh, you. I don't you know what that means. Yes. Don't call and, me Hugh. Uh, and Ted. Is it Ted? Todd. Todd. <laughs> don't, don't get me. Don't get, I was call, that don't I was calling right. him Tom last time. Uh, Bless him. Todd, uh, you're threatening to cut me? What's that about? No, no, I, I don't think he meant with a with a switchblade knife. I don't and, know. And, 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 and I don't think he meant circumcision. I think he meant just meant from the show. I think he, I think he looks like he can handle himself, and he's threatening me. I reckon, uh, we, and I you, and I you, reckon, you threatening me. Yeah, oh, you know I'm a pussy cat. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, what's that's disturbing? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. I was. Who was he? Who was that? That 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 weirdo that was in Big Brother, and he said, "Would you like me? Oh, to be your pussy cat, uh, Galloway." Galloway, that's it. I mean, Galloway. Blimey. Now, would Get you away, like Galloway. to be the pussycat? To be the pussycat. The, the pussy oh. That's wrong, that is, ain't it? it? Well, it is when it's Rula Lenska. Rula Lenska from Rock Follies. Man, she was great. She was in um, Coronation Street. Maybe not as good. Oh, I'm too young. Oh, yeah, all right. So, what? what so, what? So, two old oh. men, you were saying? Well, I've got, sorry, yeah, I've got, so I've got, I've got some news to talk about. Um, yeah. Yeah, remember, we've, talk, we've talked about a few things. I don't know if you, uh, I'll bring them up and then you'll look at your face to see if you remember. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, so, first off, big news this week. A woman's four-foot rabbit was stolen. 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 Stolton. It was in just up the road from me in Worcestershire. Stolton. It's just about five minutes off Junction 7 of the M5. Uh, did you steal a big rabbit? No. Why would I steal a rabbit? I haven't got enough carrots. Okay. It was a big bloody rabbit, though. It was. It was a big rabbit. How big was it? Four foot. She had a four foot rabbit. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, she must have had a big pussy. I actually said that. I apologise. But she's got she she's got other big animals as well. She got like a zoo or something. What a menagerie! How how do you know she likes a threesome? <laughs> no menagerie, menage a trois. <laughs> oh, I don't know about these things. You've gone up a cul de sac yeah. with that. Hey, look at that! A bit of French there, menage a trois and cul de sac. Montu, Montu, Mont, Montu. Munch two, Rodney. That's what I said. Munch what? two, munch two. I haven't eaten. I really haven't okay. eaten. And right. <laughs> I say, yeah, please, don't, please don't do that again, Steve. Paul, to be fair, that could be anything I've said in the last 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm sure you hear that quite regularly <laughs> when you're out. <laughs> <laughs> My children, roll their eyes. Dad, shut up. Uh, yeah. So anything else in the news that uh, you've been... Yeah. That, that rabbit thing just, you know... That's a huge, blooming bit of animal, that is. Oh, well, I don't, I, God, on, God what knows what she feeds. God knows what she feeds, you know what I mean? Um, rabbit don't go, don't go there, Steve. 
Alright. Alright. Um Prince Philip okay. is a funeral on Saturday. Tomorrow. Yeah, no, I, I did I did talk about that at the top of the show. Uh Burning Hull. I was really pleased with that. I uh, gave I think he was a decent man. <laughs> I'm glad I got my pop shield on. <laughs> <laughs> That's for anyone who yeah, didn't no, see last week's show, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, you, 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 you. Oh. Anyway, no, yeah. we, you shouldn't speak ill of um... the Living Dead. <laughs> yes. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. potato, potato truck. It was. He was just wheeled about. He had an aquarium oh. up his is it aquarium, whatever, an equerry yeah. pushing him around on a potato truck. Well, did you? Um, you're saying the, the Queen has ordered that they, uh, that they, uh, the family don't wear military uniforms. Ah, yeah. You hear that? Well, I, I did hear that, and I saw that that, that 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 Prince Andrew, God bless him for being not Harry or not Meghan, uh, and just a decent royal like his granddad. Um, we wanted to dress up as a, an, an admiral. And he wasn't even because they took that privilege from him anyway. I, I think they were more worried about um, Prince Harry because <gasps> uh, they're worried about he might bring he might bring his Nazi uniform with him. <laughs> yeah, at this point, I was going to press the picture. Of, I was trying to find that, but I, I I haven't done that. Prince Harry, he was a young, he was a young. <laughs> He was young. We were all young once, really. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everyone was that young that they wore in that uniform, didn't they? Well, Hit um, Hitler was young when he put his on. I'm sure. Well, that's that's very true. I really, I, I really don't like going down these sort of paths. I, I feel okay. that I, I could open my mouth and say something, and like it's just wrong. Well, I think of it this way. Yeah, fascism is wrong. All, all that stuff is out there that the, the royal family, well, some of the royal family do, right? Everyone can make their own judgments. Um, yeah. But he's, I still think he's a ginger twat. Ooh, ooh, oh, Harry, a ginger twat. Okay. Yeah, Talking a of ginger, of ginger twat, twats, yeah. uh, Paul says that it's the cat impression that. He uh, wants you to do the cat impression again. No, he said, don't do that cat impression again. <laughs> I'm thinking he's asking for you to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I couldn't. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. And then what, um, it, oh, I'm just checking what who's next, really. Sorry, what's on first? Also, I thought, uh, also in the news, you had David Cameron, who was uh, lobbying. Um, I think we all get up in the morning lobbying, mate. Uh, well, I, I think he needs to lo lobby the UK, uh, the general public, about how much of a fucking twat he is. And starting Brexit, <laughs> you clean that up. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. He is. He is. He is a, a, a an effing twat. Uh, I mean, he always has been, really. Yeah. He was. He, I mean, he had a job for Carlton TV, and he, he pretended he was a cleaner when he was talking to a journalist, so he didn't have to answer the question. What a! I mean, can you imagine? I mean, he must have put an accent on because you can't go like. Uh, we're asking, say, oh, who's who's in charge here? Who's the director of this show? And we go, like, oh, well, uh, I don't really you know. know. I'm, a cl I'm a cleaner. That not sound like I think, I think he put on a sort of, he was trying to put on the, the, the common man accent. And whatever <laughs> accent I do now, I'm in trouble. So, like, but I think he tried to make it sound like, like he was not posh. What? So he, oh. he may have spoken. <laughs> I, I reckon he did. Try, he tried to do an accent like a poo from Simpsons. <laughs> Like a poo? <laughs> yeah. A poo from Simpsons. Oh, I don't watch The Simpsons. You don't watch it? No. It's an Indi Indian accent. I'll say it's an Indian accent. Oh. But, you know, he's been Prime Minister, and the, the, I think the two main achievements he's done in his life is um, I can remember one. I can't remember the other one. Do you know you, so, you, you could have you could have kept that going for a lot longer? Ab. We could have just know, stayed yeah. there in silence. Right. I tell you what. Should we say hello to Rabia as well? Oh, sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Is that all right? Because I was just I thought I'd say that just so just in case she was texting somebody. Right. <laughs> Rabia. 
Hello. Hey, I was texting. I was trying to make sure the we get more audience. So I'm trying to get people in. Oh, but, bless you. You've yeah. noticed my, my, my viewing figures have become Piers Morgan's. <laughs> I would, I would imagine. Yeah, I I you'd be that. lucky. You'd be lucky if you get Piers Morgan. I know. I was going to say, do we have that kind of exposure tonight? I'm walking. I'm leaving. That's it. Yeah, no, I don't really like mentioning his name anyway. Really, I don't like giving the man oxygen. But no, I, let's I not do it three times. You know, you don't know what'll happen. Yeah. That's it. I like your hair, Rabia. It's grown. It has, yeah. So I have a haircut scheduled, but um, it's pretty long. Oh, have you? So, for me. <laughs> When's it? When's when's it due? <laughs> May one. When, first of May. May one. Ah, yeah. Excellent. That, I cut my own hair. Is that why you wear the hat? <laughs> <laughs> I pay enough for my haircut that I don't want to give them like reason to charge me more. So yeah, it's like I you know I do think it's bloody unfair. I think I think cutting a a, a female head of hair is so much more expensive than than mm -hmm. than, than, than and I don't. I, I do get it. It's not. No, I don't get it. it. There shouldn't be that 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 much difference in price. That's what I'm saying. No, because I think even when women get really short haircuts, they still pay a lot. I mean, you know, it's not like it's length based mm. or something, right? So yeah, that's it. I mean, my mom, bless her, ninety two. She pays sixty pounds. Yeah, that's a lot, she's, right? She's bold. Come on. You you want to go to those Turkish ones? Where they do they do like a, a full like facial wax and nasal wax and everything, they're quite cheap apparently. I, no. Is he talking to me or you? <laughs> I mean, everyone, I everyone. I mean, I've i definitely let myself go a bit, but I don't. I think my I don't. No, like no. It. I mean, as like as I had a colleague at work. He had his nose hairs waxed. Oh yeah, they'll do that. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a machine now. <laughs> does it does downstairs as well? It's very. Good. Oh gosh, Steve. <laughs> I, I, that's, that's good i mean you know like, i don't know no, it work, no i'm saying it works anywhere you can do it upstairs or downstairs it's fine because oh, it's only got a battery yeah, yeah. in it yeah. you people you people. i was gonna say don't do downstairs first before you do upstairs no no i mean it, it's 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 movable because it's a battery gee god blimey you two ought to be banned right rabia do you want to do yeah. your bit? Because uh, me yeah, and I have just spent sure. hours talking to you. <coughs> sure. So are you well? Are you well? And are you doing, enjoying life in London? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm fine. I, I just kind of still here. I mean, people know exactly what my flat looks like by now, right? So I know. I'm just here. But uh, it's fine. Yeah. You know, we're starting That's, to open up. I know. Doing all right. I'm going to a you wedding know? on the 31st of August. I am going to a wedding nice. on the 31st of August. That'll be fun. Budget, budget is not stopping me. Right, so cool. come on then. Let's let's. I'll say All goodbye right. to Avsi in a bit, and then Rabia is coming in, ladies and gentlemen. Friend, friend, friend of the hen house. It's a Rabia Goon. No, I've got to press that one. That's the one. <laughs> hey, okay. Well, thank you. Thanks, Steve. Um, yeah. So I I actually do have some news though. I didn't mention it. Um, I am getting the second dose of the vaccine tomorrow. I'm super excited because. I get, I'm not sure if it was the first dose or second dose where you get the Bill Gates microchip. So I'm excited to have both. And then I won't have to wonder anymore. Um, I'll definitely be just like, you know, basically one of his kids. He'll know where, he'll know where I am all the time. Um, I think it's going to save me time when I'm coordinating like Tinder dates, because usually I have to like, you know, call someone, let them know where I am. Then I have to deal with the whole thing of how was the date after, but I don't think Bill Gates will ask. He'll just always know where I am and he's not going to ask me any questions. So I'm feeling really good about it. Um, I'm super excited about the 5G. I don't have a 5G device, but I just feel like, you know, I'm not going to have problems on my, my Zoom work calls anymore. I'm just always going to have good reception. So that's like the good stuff about the vaccine. Um, I did have a friend react really oddly, though, when she heard that I was getting the vaccine in the first place. I got it back in February um, when basically only 80 year olds or sick people were able to get it. And most people were like, oh, yeah, that's so exciting. Congrats. You know, I'm happy for you. Can't wait to get mine. But this one person goes, oh, you're so lucky. And she was super just cringy about it. And I I was kind of like, how am I lucky? It's because I have like a chronic illness, you know, like, is that really luck? And I, I kind of felt like it was like someone saying to someone else, hey, you're so lucky you get a week off and it's because they're taking bereavement because uh, like, you know, someone died. I don't know. Just seemed like a weird, a weird thing to be jealous of. Um. 
by the way, uh, you might notice my accent. I am American. I moved to London last year before the lockdown. And, um, but often if I, if I am out and someone hears my accent, I will tell them when they ask, Hey, where are you from? I will say Canadian. <laughs> I'm, I'm Canada. I'm Canadian. And, um, I think I'm nice enough when you meet me, I dress a little bit Canadian even right now. And, um, it's always been more easy to explain Trudeau versus Trump really. And so I, I think I'm going to stick with it after lockdown because it's been working pretty great. Um, I did try to speak in a British accent when I moved here to try to fit in. And uh, I quickly found out the only thing I could really say in a British accent was, Hello, governor! Uh, that's not really how they talk over here, believe it or not. Um, despite what Dick Van Dyke taught all of us American kids when we were young. So I'm just sticking now with no accent, Canadian. Um, one thing that was a little weird, I mean, it's hard when you move to a new country and to find a place to live. And so I had a bunch of luggage and um, I hired a man with a van to move me from my Airbnb to my flat. And it seemed like something we would do in the States too, but it was literally a man, not with a van, but with like a two door car. <laughs> so I actually had to have two of my luggages piled on top of me while I'm sitting in the front seat. And um, it was a little bit awkward, but it was made more awkward when the guy driving my mover uh, said, Hey, when we get to your place, I can give you a massage because I'm also a masseuse. And it won't cost very much because you've already paid for two hours and we're only taking an hour now. So that was a little weird. Uh, I still don't know if that's normal in England because I've only moved once. Um, I will tell you, though, I only gave him two stars for his service. Um, not not really because the moving wasn't done properly, but the massage was really awful. So just, just saying, um, you know, stick with what you know. Um, I have – Steve mentioned my hair grew out, but I also – have gained a little bit of weight during lockdown. I don't think it's just hair weight. I don't think all this adds up to a stone. I'm not sure though. I should check that out. Um, but I've been looking up diets and I've been trying to figure out what diet might work for me. And I found some interesting stuff I want to share with you. So um, I looked up intermittent fasting because I've heard a lot about that. And I thought that sounded easy because it's kind of like, I thought it was what I'm doing now, which is I'm just not eating for a little while because I'm talking. Uh, it's really not. It's actually not eating for like 12 to 15 hours. And Kind of, I mean, right now this holiday is going on, but it sounds like a, a diet cultural appropriation of Ramadan, you know, like just people not eating for about a month because they're not going to last that much longer. Um, keto, I was looking at the keto diet. Uh, you can't have bananas, so I'm concerned about the Charlie horse issue I might face if I don't get enough potassium. But also, it sounds an awful lot like Atkins. And if you remember Atkins from the 90s, um, it wasn't good for you. It's kind of like Kanye changing his name to Ye. He's still bullshit, you know? Um, and then you have gluten-free. Now, I actually do gluten-free, but not as a diet. Like sometimes people say, oh, I lost so much weight not eating gluten. And I'm like, mm, you can eat chips and guac. Like what's wrong with you? <laughs> um, but it's a tricky one. I mean, you can't eat bread, as everyone knows, but you also can't do cocaine because, uh, yeah, it, it could be cut with dangerous drugs or it could be cut with all-purpose flour. And I don't want to find that out because it's like, um, and it's not like I can ask. I can't say if I'm offered it. Oh, uh, hey, is that gluten free? That just doesn't fit in at a party. So anyway, uh, I've been Rabia. Um, follow me at Rabia Comedy. Check out my podcast, More Than Work Podcast. Thank you so much. Rabia! Mention your podcast again. More Than Work Podcast. Sorry, I just want to hey. plug it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. No, what? <laughs> you can plug anything here. That's that's the main. That's a good thing. It's good. It's <laughs> difficult. It's it's weird. Can you go out and do gigs? Here, have you got um, any coming up? I is have it, a I... few. Well, I'm actually, um, I'm writing a solo, my first solo show. So I'm gonna do that at Brighton and at Camden. Oh, nice. Um, and I just secured a Camden venue, but I'm not saying anything yet because I want to make sure the contract's all set. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm stoked. But I think we can't do gigs until after that May date. So yeah. yeah, so looking forward to it. But thanks for doing this because. I mean, Steve, like we're, you're one of my like people I met during lockdown like a year ago, I right? And I just really appreciate you always you having this going for so long. It's it's really we, cool. So, oh bless you. It's, but it keeps me sane because like I can't go out and do anything. So like I, I can't do it until people can go into people's houses. So it's like it, it's and I don't think I can get into the theatre until they can open up the main house, which is a four hundred seater. And if they can't open that until you know, <laughs> so, uh, just have to wait. But yeah. It, it, and it's no, but I love meeting people, obviously, because I'm talking too much and I should be getting on with a caption competition. But 
It is, and it's nice, and I've met some really nice people, and you are one of the nice people. Oh, thank you. But yeah, so it's really nice. But yeah, thanks. Good. No, so I, I hope I hope one day that we can actually either I can either come down and see you do some gig, or you can come and do mine. That would be great. It'd be awesome. But it's like it's a long. It's a, well, we'll just see. Right, we're going to do the caption competition, but I don't know. Oh, do Alex, you you, if if Alex, if you're still around, you can come and do the caption competition. I'm going to say hello to Brandon, so I'll say goodbye to Rabia, but we'll see her in a minute. Thank you so much, Rabia. Good Thank everybody, you. and I'll say hello to Brandon. Brandon, how are you? No, you're not. Brandon, I can't hear you. Is your microphone... No, your microphone's on. You might have to go out and come back in again on StreamYard because sometimes that's what happens. There's Brandon. He's, oh, he's not hanging about. He's just decided to go. Right, I'm going to... Alex, if you're watching, Alex, do come back and you can do the ca caption competition. But I don't know if you have to sort of mop your partner's brow or something during the during your um, thing. So uh, Brandon's back. Let's see if we can hear him. I don't know if you're joking there. No, I can't. I can't hear. What's going on, Brandon? Ah. Did it when you when you come in to the studio and it says enter the studio, does the green line start moving? Gonna go check it again, I think. That's I'm gonna check it again. Wow, this is exciting. I love it when a plan doesn't come together. So um let us see if uh I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say hello to, to Todd. Hi okay. Todd. I'm going to say hello to Rabia. I'm going to say hello to Av. No, I'm not. Here he is. I don't know what he does down there. It's like I reckon. I reckon he's like a granddad in a shed, and he's making little soldiers or something. I was cutting downstairs, Steve, like you recommended. <laughs> Rabia, right. great job, by the way. Oh, Let's thanks see. so much. Oh, God I bless. Canadian. Say something, Brandon. Hi. There he Yay! is. <laughs> there he is. Hi, buddy. Excellent. How are you? Good. I'm glad we got like a theme going on with some of the shirts. We all look kind of Canadian oh. today. Mm -hmm. oh, is that North nice. American thing going on? Awesome. Yeah, you're, you you're, the, your you're, you're the odd man out, Bubba. <laughs> always, always, every week. There's, every there's week a few the reasons why I'm the odd one out. <laughs> hard, hard to believe the big reason isn't the hat with a light bulb on it. <laughs> Will you leave my hat with a light bulb alone? I will hey, not. Brandon, I, I'm yeah. just going to ask you because how, how's how's your lockdown going? Are you working? Oh. Are you allowed to do jobs? Um, so I'm in I'm in London also. Uh, so I have I have some outdoor. I have one outdoor gig booked. Yeah, in like a couple weeks. So that's the, that's the only thing I have. No, I have a, I have a few on the calendar, but that's the only one I have coming up. Is an outdoor gig. Wow. So that's that. I'm glad. I'm going to go straight into the caption competition. I'm hoping I can just press this and it will come in. And you can all shout out whenever you want. If you see anything, say it. Um, <laughs> this one, I was going to put my face on this because it does look like my body. <laughs> I just feel like um, an inner tube is kind of like a mask. We wear it to protect others as much as ourselves. <laughs> I like that. I like that. It, it, it there is a new there. definition out for hashtag me too bin. <laughs> me too bin. Oh, I like I like me too bin. That is that is very good. Which, I've is, which got... is also the too bin was the guy that was caught masturbating on a Zoom call. So that was a oh, hashtag was me too bin. Yeah. 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 But I am so I am so behind the news, as it were. That is that you never get caught masturbating on a Zoom call. You've always yeah. got blue tack. I don't know what the problem mm -hmm. is. Um, I actually said that out aloud as well. I got don't fart in your speedos. That's good. That's good. There, there, there. That's that's right. Let's go to the next one because honestly, uh, it's not gonna. Oh come on! See, technically, I should just press that. What's gone on now? I'll have to see, I might have to press escape. Somebody say something funny while we, while this is. You're doing great. Um, yeah, I know. What is that? Oh, there we go. Oh, <laughs> no, oh right, good. This, there we go. this oh. should just be the. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Sorry about that. I am doing great. Thank you. 
<laughs> I think I think I think I'd expanded the screen to full and I couldn't touch the corners. That sounds <laughs> ominous. <laughs> right, you know what that is, don't you? That's the big rabbit that was pinched. <sighs> it looks like the Peter Rabbit reboot, like hair today, guy. gone tomorrow. Oh, I knew that. Was uh, that's a good one. I knew that was coming. Hey. <laughs> Hey, the other one I had was was pubic hair found on woman. There you go. <laughs> Everyone hated it when Cheryl served up lunch. <laughs> Anything with a rabbit and a pot of stew is fine by me. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Is it just a tough one. I can't think of any of those. It is tough. That's why you should boil it for an extra hour. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, oh, oh, we've done that one. Yeah. Oh, this is this is the hardest one for me. Um, I yeah, think I've got something on that one. Is it uh, the number ten cat Larry's face when he saw Boris having sex with Jennifer Akuri? I thought you were going to say Anderson. Then. <laughs> <laughs> do, do we know the name of the cat? Do you Larry. The, is it Larry the cat? Fantastic. Larry the cat. Yeah. This is what uh, what we can expect when Disney buys the Jaws franchise. I, this is I that I had one very similar, which was the producers of the film Cats remake Jaws the musical. But I think yours is probably <laughs> this picture thinking... is still way better than any production of Cats has ever gone on. Yeah, I, well, yeah, I, I've not seen the theatre production of Cats, and uh, I certainly haven't seen the film. But that's only on other people's recommendations. It is bad. <laughs> Um, I was thinking, like, I'm here live. I'm not a shark. Like... <laughs> Baby shark. <laughs> but I wanted to be a tortoise shell. That, that, that's, that's, have we done them all? We've done them all, haven't we? Does anybody want to say anything? No, good. I'm going to do this. I'm going rem to remove it and we can all look at us, normal people. We haven't, I'm going to see if I'm going to get my check shirt on while Brandon's on. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> they're all the same color too. That's so weird. Yeah. Uh, super. No, it's good. Check shirt yeah. means check. Check shirt means something somewhere. I don't know exactly. Yeah. What. Right. So uh, everybody, stay and watch Brandon, and then we'll come back and say goodbye. All right. So we'll see Todd, Rabia, Av in a bit. It's just me and you, mate. And oh, it, hi. That sweet? Here that, we are. Did that freak you out? That no, that didn't freak out. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm bomb proof. Ah, uh, have you grown a moustache since the last time we spoke? I did. I had. Um, I got booked for a gig with the History Channel. I don't think you guys have that here, but it was a. Te it's a television show. Well, they have. It's a station, and they were doing a television show, and I booked a part, so I had to have just a mustache. But I like to have just a mustache. I don't get it very often, but. I like that. Usually it's a little fuller. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I, I like I like a mustache. I went to see... Excuse I, me for I, one second. Hi, I'm alive right there. Is that, your, <laughs> is that your significant? Yes. Yeah. Oh, bless him. <laughs> Just tell him to fuck off. <laughs> are, do you, are, we, are we keeping you? Are you? Is he... Does he want... No, it's fine. Oh. It, it, it'll be all right. Don't worry, Steve. Okay. It's fine. Uh, I just I don't I don't like to come in between people's personal lives. I lost my uh, wife because I, I we found out that living in together in lockdown was worse because we used to go out and do our own things. Yeah, and now you and got then, to know each other and you realize that. Yeah, and so she's now living with her mother. Yeah, that's a problem. It's relationships work better when you don't communicate. I think so. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to say a story about Freddie Mercury and his moustache because I saw them uh, years ago, Queen, um, and he'd just grown his moustache and he comes down and he says, hey, what do you think of the moustache? And everyone goes, boo, or yay, like that. And he goes, personally, I don't give a fuck. And I think <laughs> that's the answer to anybody who has a moustache. Yes. So, but I right. do. I, I do give fucks. I give lots of fucks all the time. In, <laughs> I'm too polite a man to ask him what respect that is. You see, so I'm, I, I feel that I, I can mean, I care. I care. Yeah, I care that's what I. That. That's what I was hoping you were saying. Yeah. But I, I have a mind that is slightly this far away from the gutter. So, which is which is not good. Right. Hey, Brandon, I'm going to let you do your stuff. 
All right, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you're back. You're thank my you, Steve. Ladies and gentlemen, back in the hen house, it's Brandon Burke. Oh, so um, nice to see you all and talk to you all. Um, like uh, like some of you, um, uh, you know, everybody was like, move to London, Brandon, move to England. You got to move to England, and and I did. And then it's been just like a year living in a flat the size of my uncle Carl's bunker that he created for the rapture to come. Um, and that, oh, as you can see, I've, I've decorated it to kind of look like purgatory, which is appropriate for um, like my life goals. <laughs> um, and I do miss, you know, you get on Facebook and I, I see all my friends back home, back in America, just, you know, enjoying their freedoms. I'm going out to concerts and movies and hiding under their chairs from lone gunmen and just real American things. And it kind of makes me a little homesick. Here I am in the United Kingdom, which really actually isn't either one of those two things. Um, oh, so I did get here. I lived here first before the lockdown. And uh, people were asking me, they'd call me up, my buddy would call and say, Brandon, how do you like living? In England, I went, what's, what's England? I said, I have no idea what England is like because I live in London, which is its own special thing. And I don't know about you all, but like I haven't traveled a lot. Like I've been to Mexico once, but haven't traveled a lot. So the only thing I knew about England or London was the things I saw on the TV. So, you know, I get here and I'm thinking I'm going to see like cute little hat shops and like, old women invite me in for afternoon tea and like cute girls just like singing in cockney and selling flowers on the side of the street and and do you know what london is it is um it's just a high street full of burger kings kentucky fried chickens and mobile phone screen repair shops there's just like lots and lots of mobile phone screen repair shops uh, no idea what the British are doing to their phone, but seems like they might have a problem. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have already heard about or know about like the stereotype that Americans have in England um, that were loud, obnoxious, and would talk to anybody. And and do you know why we have that reputation? Because me, <laughs> I'm that guy. <laughs> I just can't help myself. I'm I'm like a labradoodle in Regent's Park, you know, a labradoodle in cargo shorts and calf high white socks and a fanny pack and a smile. And, um, are you my friend? And are you my friend? And, and throw something, anything. I promise I'll bring it back. And you want to rub my belly? It's soft and furry. <laughs> oh my God, this is so much fun. I think I got to pee. Now chase me. And that is how I make most of my friends. Crackheads, mostly. I collect them like pebbles on the beach. Now, I'm not sure if you guys, if you don't already know or if you haven't already figured it out based on um, my ball cap, um, that I'm a gay. <laughs> I have to tell people that because I have what's called rest and butch face. Um, um, oh. So during the lockdown, I decided I was going to pick up some new skills. And I know like a lot of people have been doing that. They've been like trying out new things. And so I decided I wanted to learn how to. Um, I decided I want to learn how to um, read and write. <laughs> and it's been going pretty good. Hmm. It's on my bucket list. And I also thought I wanted to learn um, how to play the guitar. So I've been practicing a little bit and. Learn just a few things, and I know my dad would really be happy that I finally found out what a G-string is all about. <laughs> Daddy would be proud. Now, I'm a fan of country music. Uh, always have, because country music is just one of those things. Like, oh, Dolly Parton is my favorite. I'm sure you got a Dolly Parton out there. Out there. Um, because Dolly Parton I like because her songs always like make you feel good about yourself and happy right and happiness like like you know those times when you're like um taking a pee and you aim just right to the inside of the bowl so you can get all that crud off it's 
or women or woman. I think we have only one woman. Woman, listen. If you've ever been confused and mad by the expression on your man's face when you're talking to him about helping with the housework and he has that look on his face and he's kind of embarrassed and shocked it's because he's thinking, aiming my stream like a high pressure water jet at the muck inside of the bowl is helping with the housework. <laughs> That's just a little thing to help you out. So I wrote my own song because Dolly Parton has a song about a coat that her mama gave her. So I wrote so a song about something my mama gave me. Black and white photo of a homecoming queen. Smiling at the camera, she's barely 16. Don't got my mama's eyes, her chin or red hair, but she taught me how to work. In the day with a prayer. Mama gave a gift that'll never fade away. When people look at me, they often say, I know that boy who's now a man, cause he's got his mama's hand. Hands are slightly girlish, hands that smell of fish. Hands that wipe my grandma's ass and reach into my daddy's pants. Now I hope you understand why I'm proud to have my mama's hands. Now that she's gone, I get down on my knees. Thank God for the gifts that mama gave me. Instead of a bottle for them voices in my head, I reach for that little box I keep under my bed. And I open that box and I give each little dried up little finger just a little kiss of my mama's hands. Thank you all very much. I'm Brandon Burke. Hey. Sorry, Brandon, I pressed the wrong thing there. I know, I saw that happen. I thought maybe that's my warning. I've been over the time. No, so, I didn't mean so that. I decided I was... to, I, so I just decided to cut out the fourth and fifth and sixth um, first I'm, and then yeah. not do the bridge and then just Country go right back into the end. So it all worked sorry. out. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Yeah, no, I was I, thought I was trying to remove it from the screen and I saw what happened. I thought, oh, it's OK. It's okay. I've only been doing this a year and a half. You think I'd know what right. buttons to press? So I can tell that you give a fuck. So that makes me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I even, I even, I have even put my shirt on. Look at this, people. Nice. Well done. So, I've, 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 I've has as well. I see. Nice. That, we did it, guys. Come on. Look at that. We all have to go yeehaw or something like that. I don't know what the stereotype is. Glad of, of, to be here. Glad to be here. <laughs> Put some more Thank shrimps you. on the barbie. <laughs> no? Can I just say, we're all very lucky because oh. Av is known as the man with a million voices. <laughs> do you, do you, do you, do you Nigel Farage for us? Nigel Farage. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, it's uncanny, uncanny. Uh, do you Meghan Markle? <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> No, I'm getting in trouble. No. Brandon, thank you so, so much for closing the show. We're going to say goodbye to everybody. Um, this is a hat, by the way. It's not real. Uh, <laughs> just in case. Thank you all so much. I hope to see you all live. Uh, Todd's going to be my biggest uh, difficulty, but I'd love to go to Ontario because I've been to Toronto, yeah. so I feel um, I know I, Canada. I, I would wait a bit. Okay. <laughs> oh no, this is this is. I believe there is a golden dawn this year, but I I, I just uh, I'm hoping to find her. <laughs> right. No, I do. I think we, you know. I hope so. Anyway. So fingers crossed. Thank you all so much, everybody, for being part of the hen house tonight. I've really enjoyed myself tonight. I've been drinking. So thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Have a lovely week, and I hope to see you all again soon. Bye, bye, bye. everybody. Bye. bye.